Hello again. Uh, I'm going to teach you some more stuff about the harmonica and this uh, video is going to be about cross harp versus straight harp. Now in the last video I talked a little bit about the difference between cross harp and straight harp. Cross harp means that you suck, you, your chord starts by sucking in on the harmonica. Straight harp means it begins by blowing out. And so I'm going to play two different songs for you today to kind of demonstrate this. The first one will be straight harp. Don't you like how cool it sounds when you talk into one of these? Some of the guys actually use these. I know that on Aerosmith's Honkin' on Bobo's album, he talked into his harmonica mic to get some of uh, the sound effects that are on some of the uh, songs. But anyhow, that's neither here nor there. But um, we're going to start by starting in the middle of the harmonica and blowing out. This is going to be my country tis of the. Now most of that was in the key of C, played straight through the harp, blowing through to get most of my notes. And what I do, some people use their tongue to block some of the holes. I tend to just tighten up my mouth like this when I, when I blow. So if I'm going to blow one note, I tighten my mouth up and I open it just a little bit if I want to get more. So I end up get doing going back and forth, it'll be like this. Depending on how wide you open your mouth, the more notes you can play at the same time. Um, but when you're playing a melody and you want it to be clean and clear, which is uh, very typical of like country styles on the harmonica, you're going to want to either keep your mouth close together or you're wanna going to block holes with your tongue. I find that it kind of hurts the tip of my tongue to do that, which some people I guess it doesn't bother, but um, for me I don't. it's not very comfortable, so I just tighten up my uh, lips real uh, tight. The other thing is the harmonica is my first instrument. I actually, when I was a kid, I found a harmonica buried in my backyard, and I didn't know what it was, so I took it in and I cleaned it up. and. I, I meant it was missing the uh, covers, the, the metal parts right here, it was just the comb and when I cleaned it up and I got all the dirt out of it and I cleaned it up with a toothbrush I started playing and I was able to play blues stuff. Well I think that's what kind of led to my love for blues music because then I started to hear blues music on the radio or on TV and I was like wait a minute I can do some of that on my harmonica and I started just intuitively playing cross harp because I would suck in on it and and if you pick up a harmonica you're gonna find it's so easy to play cross harp and I find that it's, it takes a lot more thought and effort to play straight harp so when I'm playing a song like My Country Tis of Thee or for those of you who are in England or Canada or France or not France um, Australia you're thinking of maybe God Save the Queen with that tune but um but here it's a My Country Tis of Thee and so um it takes a little more effort for me to think through it. But you can also play melodies playing cross harp and I wanted to show that by playing jingle bells. So it would go like this. So that's my little Christmas deal for you. But um, one of the things that I do a lot when I'm playing either cross harp or straight harp, I showed you in other videos that flapping technique. The other thing that I do sometimes is I'm, I'm holding it basically with these two fingers, my first finger of the right hand and my thumb of the left hand, and sometimes I'll rock it back and forth. And I'll combine that with a little bit of a head shake
and I'll mix it with that flapping technique with my hand and it kind of gives a really neat effect that you don't normally uh, wouldn't get just playing it straight. One time I worked with John Popper from Blues Traveler. Uh, I set up a show at a music hall in New York and I got to see his amp that he uses in his microphone and the mic that he uses I guess he built it for himself and he has these different buttons on it and he has different amps set up behind him with different effects and what's neat about, um, about what he has is he can click the button and change it switches over to a different amp so if he wants a different sound effect he hits a button and a different amp comes on and so you know that's you can experiment with all sorts of different techniques but if I remember right I think he had like one speaker that had kind of a rotary effect to it kind of like a Leslie it may have been a Leslie I don't remember it's been a while and um, then he had a um, like a Fender Twin I think and then he had a couple other different amps and with that mic he could just click and go between them I think he even had a setting where he could turn on multiple amps at the same time and I find that um, I like to use my effects pedal I plug I got this plugged into my guitar effects pedal and I can changing it like more distorted or a clean sound or whatever and because I don't have a lot of amps like like John Popper does but I still can get a lot of neat sound effects with it. So regardless of whether you're playing cross harp or straight harp, you can get neat sound effects by using different effects pedals and, and different amplifiers that are currently on the market. Or you can do like John Popper did. I'm pretty sure he made his own. It looked to me like it was all covered up in electric electrician's tape and he had just kind of pieced it together himself, but it really was effective and it worked very well. So I hope that you got something good out of this video and that it, um, you know taught you something that you didn't know before and if there's anything else you would like to learn please uh, just put it something in the comments and I'll be happy to try to make a video out of it or give you more uh, clarity on the um, topic so I hope you have a great day and God bless